There are so many memorials around WA, from statues to pictures to gardens. But there's one in particular that has a really special place in the heart of West Australians. Today, I'm talking to the caretaker of that cottage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to prep your standard NATO. Okay, so today's guest is Anne Chapel. That's how I say it. Wonderful. And you are the historian coordinator of the Anzac Cottage? That's right. Um, what is the Anzac Cottage? Anzac Cottage is a little cottage set in Kalgoorlie Street, Mount Hawthorne. Mm-hmm. And it is unique in that it was built in one day mm. for a returned wounded soldier who had returned from Gallipoli. It was meant as a, with a dual purpose as a home for this wounded, wounded soldier and his family and as a memorial. So built in one day, I mean, that's one day. pretty significant. It is very significant. It all began when the Mount Hawthorne Progress Association, who had formed to make sure that services, etc., were extended to the pretty relatively new suburb in mm. 1916. They like so many other people, were carried away by Gallipoli mm-hmm. and the stories that came back and had decided to build a war memorial in Mount Hawthorne. Mm. However, my grandfather, dry, uh, Private John Porter, was wounded on the very first day at Gallipoli, mm. so on the 25th of April. He was invalided back to Western Australia and came to live in Mount Hawthorne with my grandmother and eldest aunt. Mm-hmm. So he was the first returned wounded soldier to live in that suburb. Wow. And when um, the people went to talk to him, as back in those days they didn't have TV, etc., and to get a first-hand account of what actually happened at Gallipoli was pretty special. Mm. They found that because of his wounds he could no longer work and the house that he he was living in at the time uh, did not belong to them. It was just on loan. Mm. So he was concerned about how he would provide for his family going forward. So they decided in something of, I think, a visionary Mm -hmm. thought that they would make this memorial into a practical memorial in a memorial and a home for a returned wounded soldier. And so that's what they decided to do. Now, they appealed to the community Mm -hmm. For assistance, and the community really came up with the goods. Um, people volunteered money, people volunteered furniture, etc. But really importantly, a lot of men volunteered their labour and their skills, wow. free of charge, to do this. So the Mount Hawthorne Progress Association had first of all thought that they would build a little wooden house with a tin roof Mm -hmm. because, as we all know, in wartime there's not a lot of money around. However, once they had sort of toted up all of the offers, they decided they had enough money to build a brick house with a tiled roof. So being people of a dramatic (laughs) trend, they staged it in three Weeks. Mm. So the first week, January the 29th, they cleared the block. 30 men with axes and saws came along and cleared the trees and the shrubs, etc. The next week, on February the 5th, uh, 1916, they had a parade of 70 drays mm. that were all laden with the building materials and, and tools and furniture, etc. that came from the Perth Railway Station, up to Mount Hawthorne, this parade. And it was led by um, the Model T Ford that <laughs> carried the Metters number no. 2 stove. <laughs> and then the last week, February the 12th, at 4.30 in the morning, at the same time as the soldiers landed at Gallipoli, mm-hmm. a town crier went around the streets of Mount Hawthorne, <laughs> ringing his bell very loudly and saying, Arise, arise, Anzac Cottage is to be built today. Wow. And 200 men came along and, free of charge, offered their services. And at sundown, the house was all but complete. 
just that's, amazing. That's yeah, it sounds like something out of a, a fairy tale. It that is actually happened. Yes. Wow, yes. what a, an, an amazing community that could come together like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, I just. I think that's part of the reason, apart from the family connection. I just love it because it is a such a wonderful illustration of what community spirit can do. Amazing. And it it's is. still open? Yes, it's still standing mm-hmm. um, 102 years later. <laughs> um, we open on the four, uh, first Sunday of each month mm-hmm. from 1 o'clock till 4 o'clock for people to come and have a look through. The cottage is now set up as a museum yeah. um, with exhibits, etc., sort of telling the story. But I'm always there, and as you can tell, I can talk underwater with a mouthful of marbles <laughs> about this. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a family relation, and yes. you're really passionate about it, and I can, yeah. I can feel that passion across yeah. the room from you. Yes. It's such an amazing story. It is. it is an amazing story. And what is, I think, so amazing is that there was no government intervention whatsoever. Mm. Government, I mean, they supported it and turned up to open it, etc. Mm-hmm. But um, as one wag said to me, if there had been government involved, we'd probably still be waiting for it to be finished. <laughs> Well, I know when I was building my house, which took like you know well over six months yes. to build, it was the government was you got to have these size windows yes. and you've got to have this type of brick wall in. I think back then they didn't have to go through that. <laughs> they decided to do it in December, and by January they were clearing the block. So obviously. Um, regulations and that weren't as strict as what they are today. Or maybe somebody just didn't tell them. Until no, they were that's doing right. It. We'll find out later. <laughs> These permits weren't. Clear. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. So I know that the house occasionally holds events as well. Yes, because of the origins of the cottage, we have Anzac Day. Mm-hmm. On Anzac Day, we have a wreath making workshop for children wow. at three o'clock in the afternoon which is followed by a sunset service, Mm -hmm. which we like to think is the last service conducted on the Australian mainland. Mm -hmm. And uh, Remembrance Day, we acknowledge that. And just recently we've had an animal memorial um, installed at the cottage. Mm -hmm. And so coming up in September, we're going to have a day where we're dedicated to the animals who supported the servicemen and women whilst they were at war. Oh, gorgeous. And mm. we all know the story of Sam Smitty's donkey, but there's yes. so many more animals out there absolutely. that really held apart. Yeah, That's, there's just amazing. Yeah. Mm. Well, it sounds like a, an absolutely wonderful place to visit, and I feel like it's one of those places we should probably all visit here in WA. Uh, now, you're trying to raise money to make a documentary about that Yes, cottage. Yes, we very much would like this story to continue. It's spreading. We yep. have lots and lots of people who do come and visit. But one of the things, um, my mother, who is 97, going on 98, Mm. going on 18, um, (laughs) she is, as I said, in the sunset of her life, if you like, Mm -hmm. and she is the last remaining person who lived, actually lived in the cottage as part of the Porter family. Mm -hmm. So because of her passing, we would really like to have this documentary as something that perpetuates the story into the future Mm. um, and using the knowledge that she has of the story. The other part of this documentary is I've discovered when I've been doing research something that is very poignant in that about 15 of the men Mm -hmm. who volunteered to help build Anzac Cottage then went on to enlist in the war Mm. And went overseas and fought, and some of them didn't return. Mm -hmm. So in effect, they built their own memorial, Yeah, which is quite, yes, it makes the hair on my head stand on end. Yeah, it's a bit chilling, that That is, it's very chilling. It would be fantastic to follow up and find out their stories. Yes, well, that's what we would like to do to make that part of the the documentary, because Mm. to me that it just illustrates the dedication that people felt Hmm. at that time yeah you're trying to raise funds for it is there anything else you need for it do you need the crew and all that stuff i've got a wonderful friend who has done these sorts of things before Mm -hmm. and he's got a little crew together they're very experienced etc and so they've been helping and guiding me through the process Mm -hmm. but so all we really need we've got the story we've got the crew (laughs) all we need is the money (laughs) 
Fair enough. Money is the root of all evil. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How much are you hoping to, to raise? Well, we we do have a GoFundMe page mm-hmm. for 300000 mm-hmm. um, which is a substantial amount, I understand. But we're hoping um, to get that amount. If we don't get the whole amount, we may be able to sort of cut the cloth mm-hmm. to match the funds. Fair enough. <laughs> Going to work with the, the resources yes, you have. Yes, that's yeah. right. Wonderful. Well, yep. uh, I know that the RSL is really interested in getting involved how we can. Um, like I said, obviously money is not yes. something we can yep. we can give here, but we can certainly get your name mm, out there and that's great. help with publicity and then... Well, yeah, yeah. we want to see this. <laughs> exactly. Well, my my pitch is that they did it in 1916. Mm-hmm. They managed to raise the money to build the cottage. Um, maybe we can do it in 2018. Yeah, come on, people. Get yes. behind it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Oh, so Fantastic. So, guys, jump on GoFundMe. Look up the Anzac Cottage. We'll make sure a link goes up on the Facebook page as well. Donate what you can because that sounded pretty amazing. This would be a great story that needs to be shared. It's an integral part of West Australian history. Absolutely. And I think actually Anzac Cottage is unique in Australia because yeah. it's the only cottage I've found that was built as a memorial and a home for a returned wounded soldier. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. And it's something that we should be really proud of. Oh, absolutely. Go mm. WA. Well done to the community for, for doing that. So absolutely. Now we're just going to get the community together yes, again. Yes, <laughs> that's right. And I know we can. Communities are wonderful. Yep. They have strength that they don't even know about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Perth is a wonderful community. It, it really is. is. Yeah, for sure. Even if you can't donate money, guys, make sure you visit Anzac Cottage at some point or another. Yes. It's a lot of great history there. Absolutely. Uh, and entry is free to the cottage. Fantastic. Yep because we like it that way because we want to spread the story that's what we're about yes that's right thank you so much for coming and talking to me about this oh you're more than welcome (laughs) this podcast was edited published and produced by the rslwa head to www.rslwa.org.au for other content Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook.